So let's get into this question a little bit. First of all, when two speakers overlap in their coverage area. So what does he mean by that? Let's take a look. Oh, I have so many things open. Okay, uh, let's take a look at this. So here we've got two speakers. There's one over here. There's one over here. Two mains, they're aimed to the center of this room here. So what does overlap mean? Um, well, that means that this guy's playing this way and this guy's playing this way. So they're overlapping almost everywhere. In fact, it's really only a tiny area that's you know right around in here where we have isolation, where we don't have the potential for comb filtering. Everywhere else we have comb filtering. So this seems like a pretty common setup to me. So I think this is where the question comes from is how much should we worry about this? Um, what do we need to know about comb filtering? So that's what they say. How much should we worry about comb filtering? Well, how much should we worry about comb filtering? Uh, first, let's take a look at this paper on the audibility of comb filter distortions. There's a couple interesting things in here, so let's just take a look at the results. So, for piano and snare drum, a minimum in the mean threshold of all subjects was found at 0 0.8 milliseconds time offset. So, that means that the just noticeable difference of delay necessary for someone to hear a change in the sound and to hear comb filtering is 0 0.8 milliseconds. That doesn't seem like very much. If we take a look at phase invaders over here, and I'm, we're just looking at two signals here, so uh, two exact same full frequency signals. So this pink line is showing full summation, and if I add any delay, uh, we start to see comb filtering. So what is 0 0.8 milliseconds? I don't think I'm going to be able to do that because this moves too coarsely, but I can do 0 0.10 and that's close enough for us to see that, oh wow, that means that there's basically like two big nulls in the high frequency um, of this range. And so this is what people are hearing. So my takeaway from this article is that this response is enough for people to notice a difference, to notice comb filtering. Let's look at the second thing. Single subjects probably, uh, sorry, single subjects reliably detected level differences as much as 21.5 dB and 27 dB. That's amazing to me. So you could play a copy of a snare drum, 27 dB quieter than the original, and you could hear comb filtering. That's an amazingly small amount. So uh, hopefully this won't crash here because I have a lot of things running. But if we go over here to smart and we start this measurement and I hit the generator then we get a flat line there because over here in AU lab I'm just sending back a copy of the signal. Um, now let's add some comb filtering here. I'll just put in a random amount, 100 samples. Cool, comb filtering. We know what that looks like. But that article was saying that even at 27 dB quieter, people could hear that. So I'll turn down this signal here. That's almost 27 dB, and I'll reset this. Oops, that's not the one I meant to turn down. Sorry about that. Turn this back up, turn this one down 27 dB. Okay, so take a look at that. Um, that to me looks like a tiny amount of comb filter, right? Uh, we're seeing peaks here. I know I don't have this perfectly centered, but peaks of uh, like half a dB, dips of half a dB, um, really small amount of comb filtering that supposedly people can hear. Okay, so this is starting to make me think that yes, comb filtering is significant and something I should worry about. Let's take a look at one last thing in this article.
Uh, I like this line. I thought this was, I thought this was interesting. Audio professionals should always be aware that some of their clients might be more sensitive to distortions than they are themselves. So um, if you can't hear comb filtering, someone else might. So this that tiny amount of comb filtering that we were looking at in Smart just a second ago, you might not hear that, but somebody else might. So um, just the beginning of this conversation is just to point out that the, the, even like the smallest amount of interaction, a really small amount of delay, um, uh, big level offsets, there could still be comb filtering happening. Okay, so we talked about this. And uh, yeah, let's get into map. So there's another thing that I want to consider, which is this idea of critical bandwidth. So I've seen this come up in Bob McCarthy's book and articles by Merlin Van Veen, where they talk about this critical bandwidth of one sixth octave. Um, my takeaway from this is that anything, any comb filter that is more narrow, peak to peak, than one six octave is not going to sound like comb filter anymore. It'll sound like something else. Uh, changes in timbre, spaciousness, things like that. So if we head back over to map, and I've got a microphone here, and I turn these guys on and do a prediction, and I take a look at my prediction, um, and you can see I've got these peaks up here. So what can be interesting is to put in a 1 6 octave parametric EQ and then you can move that around and put it in these nulls in between these peaks and see are these peaks within um, 1 6 octave of each other. And to me, it looks like these peaks are not. Um, maybe barely, but if we move it up to, say, 656, 656, now it looks like they definitely are, right? So what this makes me think is that below 656 hertz, we have audible comb filter. And uh, above 656 hertz, it's not audible anymore. And then at some point, we'll get to where the peaks are so close that they uh, have gone beyond 24 cycles, and then it might even sound like an echo. But for now, I'm just talking about this. Um, so let's say comb and then... I don't know, not comb. How about that? Looks like a comb, but not audible. Maybe I should just write not audible. Okay, so just another consideration that um, while this looks like it's all a comb filter, it actually maybe only sounds or is perceived as a comb filter down here. And that to me kind of makes sense because we have these big, deep valleys and peaks as well. By the way, if you guys are watching this, or if you just tuned in, I'm talking about uh, this question of comb filter. When two speakers overlap in their coverage areas, how much should we worry about comb filtering? Um, if you have any comments or questions about comb filtering yourself, you can put those in the comments for this video, and I'll try to look at them now, or uh, I'll get to them later in text. Okay. Um, so here's my thought about whether or not we should worry about this. You can't escape it, number one. Comb filtering is happening all the time. Um, we definitely try to reduce it, but if comb filter were something that we should 100% get rid of all the time, number one, it would be impossible, but number two, we would never do system designs like this where we have speakers left and right of the stage because there's this big um, distance here and we talked earlier about how all this audience out here is going to experience comb filtering. It turns out that 
we like this sound. It's the sound of spaciousness, and this works really well for music. Now, let me store this. Okay, so this is what um, maybe a representation of this type of design might look like. So I'll save this. And I've got another design we can look at. Now, if we want to try to reduce comb filtering and maybe we're working on a speech only event and intelligibility is paramount, then we might wanna look at a different kind of design. Maybe instead of point destination, we want something like a point source. So here I've got these three speakers making a point source array. And let me see if this will work. I'll just go back to the measurement viewer and hit predict. Cool, so look at how different, the, look at how different this is. We still have some cone filtering up here, right? But the rest of this is pretty clean. And I can move the microphone around and we'll see these interactions change a little bit. But that's because these speakers are splayed in such a way that as much as possible, they try to have isolation on axis. They quickly move through a transitional zone that's small in the middle and then quickly go back into isolation with the next element. Um, and so we can get a much smoother response like this that might work better in some, in some situation where, as I mentioned, speech intelligibility is paramount. So if you really want to reduce the amount of comb filtering, that might be the kind of array that you want to look at. What else did I want to talk about? Oh, so another thing to consider is that comb filtering can um, lower your signal to noise ratio. So let's turn this thing up, back on. Measurement, signal generator. Turn this back up. Okay, here's our familiar comb filter. Um, so when we've got these dips here, what's left over is just noise, right? So we can kind of turn this up and even see, uh, that's not a good representation. Um, but if we were to take an average now of our coherence, we would see that we have lower signal to noise ratio. Let's make this even worse. Okay, now let's, it's even worse, right? So point of this demo is just to show that you have a lower overall signal noise ratio with comb filtering. Um, and actually, I guess I jumped the gun on this. I actually already talked about this. I guess the last thing that I'll say, I think I have one more design I wanted to show you. Again, hoping that this won't crash. So I'll save this. Maybe I should close some of these other apps. Okay. Um, so maybe it's not these normal designs of where we have, you know, speakers on left and right of the stage that we have to worry about that much. We talked about how that can actually sound pleasing, especially when it comes to concert sound. Um, the biggest problem is probably just when we have misalignments. So let's say that you have uh, this main speaker here and then you're going to turn on a delay that uh, would then help you support uh, things that are happening in this last row, help the response, intelligibility, reduce the amount of comb filter, so if I first mute that delay speaker and we just take a look at the measurement right there, uh, it doesn't want me to do it for some reason. Let's get rid of all these. Um, okay, there's our speaker by itself. Why did I want to mute it? That's not true. I didn't want to mute it. I just wanted to take this delay off. So this is the correct delay. 
Um, what if we were to put something wrong in there, like, uh, I don't know, 40 milliseconds, because we're just sort of guessing? Um, so let's store this, because it's hard to know what this really looks like, right? But it looks like we're having comb filtering, but it looks crazy because um, I've got all the walls on. Maybe it would be easier to look at this without the walls on for a second. Yeah, let's do that. Okay, so this looks not awesome, right? <laughs> I just wanted to show that if we put the correct delay value back in there, then um, we should have a better response, and we do. So now you can see in blue here that we've gotten rid of all this comb filtering. So I think this is the easiest win. If you're worried about comb filtering, just measure, I think make sure that you are doing your synchronization between elements in the right spot and that you are doing it correctly. Um, you know, it's not something that you want to rush through or skip just because you think it won't matter that much. Because it might. As we saw in the beginning, people can hear even small amounts of comb filtering. And it's especially important um, if you care about speech intelligibility. Okay, so I think that's all I have to say about comb filtering right now. Uh, if you want to talk more about this, I'll be having a workshop this weekend called Sound System Tuning Without Measurement Software. Uh, you can sign up for that at sounddesignlive.com or look for it on my Facebook page. I'll also post a link to it below this video. If you have questions about comb filtering or you think that I said something wrong, please let me know. Uh, comment on this video um, and I'd be happy to talk about it. All right, thanks guys.